So AI is truly changing everything. The way we create, the way we shop, even the way we think. This week, Google dropped VO 3.1, an incremental but important step toward making AI video more controllable and realistic. ChatGPT is moving into retail with instant checkout. And legendary AI researcher Andre Karpathy says we're still missing key pieces to make AI agents truly useful. But Elon Musk has a few things to say about that. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, we have Google introducing VO 3.1 and advanced capabilities in Flow. In Flow, Google's AI filmmaking tool, they're rolling out enhanced creative capabilities to edit your clips, giving you more granular control over your final scene. And for the first time, they're also bringing audio to existing capabilities like ingredients to video, frames to video, and extend. Along with this, they're introducing VO 3.1, which they say brings richer audio, more narrative control, and enhanced realism that captures true-to-life textures. So more control, especially when it comes to audio generation within scenes, and better realism. It's not a massive leap by any means, but it's an important one because it shows where we're heading. We're moving beyond just improving quality and realism and toward more control and personalization. And honestly, it feels like we're only a few years away from what people call the dead internet theory, if we're not there already. I mean, just look at this. According to new research from Graphite, more articles are now written by AI than by humans. You've probably seen this chart all over X. Since ChatGPT launched at the end of 2022, it took less than two years for machine-written content to overtake us. And interestingly, since these lines converged, the amount of both AI-written and human-written articles has more or less been stagnant. I think the same thing is going to happen with video. Right now, AI-generated clips are skyrocketing, especially across social media. And as the quality improves, we're only going to see more. Eventually, it'll probably balance out just like articles did, but at what point? And what will it do to social media, as well as the internet in general? Meanwhile, over in Google's science division, a Gemma model helped discover a new potential cancer therapy. I actually made an entire video breaking this one down because it's insane. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. But here's the short version. Google and Yale University trained a 27 billion parameter model called cell to sentence scale, or just C2S scale, to understand the language of individual cells. Using that, the model generated a brand new hypothesis about how certain tumor cells behave, which scientists then tested in real living cells and confirmed it was right. Essentially, it predicted a new drug combination that makes cold tumors, the kind your immune system can't see, more visible to the body, which can make immunotherapy far more effective. In lab tests, the combination boosted antigen presentation by roughly 50%, meaning the AI literally found a new way to help the immune system recognize cancer. Google admits its early stage research, but still, this isn't just AI writing articles or generating videos anymore. It's starting to generate actual scientific discoveries. And as if curing cancer wasn't ambitious enough, Google DeepMind also announced a new partnership with CFS Energy to help accelerate nuclear fusion. They're training AI models to predict and stabilize plasma inside reactors, basically using machine learning to control miniature suns. So within a single week, Google's AI helped push forward art, biology, and energy, which is kind of terrifyingly impressive. Now, in other AI news, Anthropic dropped Claude 4.5 Haiku this week. There's not really much to say about this model. It's basically just a faster and cheaper version of Claude 4.5 Sonnet with a small trade-off in performance. So if you're already using Sonnet 4.5, this is definitely a model worth experimenting with, especially if you need speed over raw power. But now here's something I think a lot of people missed. OpenAI announced this week that ChatGPT can now automatically manage your saved memories. No more memory full. You can also search, sort, and even reprioritize memories in settings, while the model decides on its own what's worth remembering contextually. So this is actually a much bigger deal than it looks, because what OpenAI is really building here isn't just better recall, it's the foundation of a login with OpenAI system. 
Think about it. Your AI account that already remembers you could soon work across apps, websites, and maybe even payments. Like how you log in with Google or Apple ID, but this one doesn't just identify you, it actually knows you. It remembers your preferences, your writing style, your purchase history, basically everything you've ever told it, and can then act on that information wherever it's integrated. Which brings us to this. OpenAI just partnered with Walmart to test ChatGPT powered instant checkout. You'll essentially be able to describe what you want. For example, two packs of pasta and almond milk. And ChatGPT will handle the cart, payment, and confirmation automatically, all directly inside of ChatGPT. So not only is ChatGPT becoming more integrated with third-party apps or third-party apps with it, but it's also becoming more capable of actually performing actions on your behalf, using your context, your memory, and, well, your data. Now, this brings us to something co-founder and former OpenAI and Tesla researcher Andre Karpathy talked about recently. What it'll actually take to make these AI agents useful co-workers instead of just helpful tools. In this clip, he breaks down the missing pieces. Things like persistent memory, multi-modality, and the ability to learn continuously in real time. All the things you need for an agent that can actually think and improve alongside you. He even gives a prediction for when we might get there. Check this out. Well, uh, actually make it work. So in my mm. mind, I mean, when you're talking about an agent, I guess, or what the labs have in mind and what maybe I have in mind as well, is it's uh, you should think of it almost like an employee or like an intern that you would yeah. hire to work with you. Uh, so for example, you work with some employees here. Yeah. Uh, when would you prefer to have an agent like Cloud or Codex uh, do that work? Like yeah. currently, of course, they can't. Uh, what would it take for them to be able to do that? Uh, wh right. Why don't you do it today? Yeah. And the reason you don't do it today is because they just don't work. So right. uh, like they don't have enough intelligence. They're not multimodal enough. They can't do computer use and all this kind of stuff. And uh, they don't do a lot of the things that you've alluded to earlier. You know, they don't have continual learning. You can't just tell them something and they'll remember it. Yeah. And they're just cognitively lacking and it's just not working. And I just think that it will take about a decade to work through all of those issues. Interesting. So uh, as a professional podcast, and a, <laughs> a viewer of AI from afar, it's sort of easy to identify for me, like, oh, here's what's lacking. Continual learning is lacking or multimodality is lacking. But I don't really have a good uh, way of trying to put a timeline on it. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody's like, how long will continual learning take? I There's no like prior I have about like, this is a project that should take five years, 10 years, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Why a decade? Why not mm -hmm. one year? Why not I 50 see. years? Uh, yeah, I guess this is where you get into like a bit of, uh, I guess, my own intuition a little bit and yeah. also just kind of doing a bit of an extrapolation of with respect to my own experience yeah. in the field, mm -hmm. right? So I guess I've been in AI for almost two decades. I mean, it's going to be maybe 15 years or so, not that long. Uh, you had Richard Sutton here who yeah. was all around, of course, for much longer. But I do have about 15 years of experience of people making predictions of seeing how they actually uh, turned out. And also, I was in the industry for a while, and I was mm. in research, and I worked in the industry for a while. So I guess I kind of have uh, just a general intuition that I have left from that. Uh, and uh, I feel like the problems are uh, tractable. They're surmountable. Yeah. But uh, they're still difficult. And if I just average it out, it just kind of feels like a ticket, I guess, to me. Th th this is actually quite interesting. So yeah, that's the vision. Agents that can actually learn, adapt, and work with us, not just for us. But right after that clip started making the rounds, Elon Musk jumped in, taking a jab at Carpathy for calling AI engineering research. And of course, he followed it up with an AGI prediction of his own, claiming that AI capable of doing anything a human with a computer can do, but not smarter than all humans and computers combined, is probably just three to five years away, not 10. He also revealed that Grok 5 will feature dynamic reinforcement learning, meaning it'll keep learning and updating after deployment, which sounds a lot like the kind of continuous learning Carpathy says is still missing. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever even heard of Dynamic RL, so maybe they're actually onto something here. Now, finally, to wrap things up, here's a robot that can shave your face. This demo comes from a Chinese embodied AI startup called No Matrix which just raised a massive Alibaba-led funding round to scale robots just like this. The robot's powered by an embodied large language model that adjusts its movements in real time. So when the person moves, the AI instantly recalculates pressure and position to keep shaving safely. It's quite impressive, but also quite terrifying. I don't think I would volunteer to do this just yet. Let me know if you would. But it's also kind of the perfect metaphor for where we are right now. Machines learning to handle increasingly human tasks, 
tasks that actually have weight to them, like making purchases or dragging a blade across someone's face. Anyways, that's all for this week's recap. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.